Hi, it's Robbie, and today I am sitting by one of my ponds, and I wanted to share something with you in case some of you wanted to do a fun craft. Here is a cement hummingbird I made. Eh, it's not that great. It's my first one, though. So let's not knock it too big. And somebody pooped on its head. Probably the hawks that are flying around here. This is a cement hummingbird, and I'd like to do some more pretty soon, but I thought I'd share how I did this because I've seen a lot of videos of people doing it, and it didn't work out the way they said it was gonna work out, but I found out how to make it work. This was this. This is like a little beanie baby parrot. I have nothing against parrots. I actually love parrots. But I took this, since I had two of them, and I made that out of this. So I'm gonna go over and show you how you can do that. So if you've got like a teddy bear or an old stuffed animal you're, you're about ready to throw in the trash, you may be able to take that bear and turn it into anything. You could turn it into a person, you could turn it into a dog, you could turn it into anything. I took this little macaw and I turned it into a little hummingbird, little simple statue sitting here. It's been sitting here for quite a few months now. I could paint it or leave it. Right now I chose to leave it. It's completely waterproof. So just because it was once this, it is completely waterproof. So don't worry about the weather, the rain. You can make a fountain out of it if you wanted to. But I have it sitting right here by the pond. I'm gonna show you exactly how to make it out of a stuffed animal the right way that will work and you will have lots of fun with it. And I'm doing something I've never done before. I do do some cement work, so that's not a problem. I used to be a master in paper mache and pretty good in some clay work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this stuffed parrot and turn it into a hummingbird. I have nothing against parrots. I actually like parrots, but I'm gonna kinda of change it around. So you know what, I've got a pocket, so let me just put this in my pocket. Now, now the beak isn't right, so we know the beak isn't right. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use a pipe cleaner on the beak or what I'm going to do. Let me see if this works. What I'm going to do is see if I can wrap the beak real tight and make it look long. That's my first thing. Otherwise I'll try yarn. You're, you're doing this with me. So here I'm going to take over on the video on what I did. So I had to make the beak thinner and I wasn't sure which way I was going to go because you can really use anything when it comes to cement. So what I ended up doing was using pipe cleaner and then I tied it with yarn and then I went tighter on it with masking tape. Now cement will stick to everything but pretty much plastic. A lot of people oil their plastic so it will slip right out if they're using it for a mold. But remember this is going to be encased so it doesn't really matter too much what's on the inside. But going back to the bird, I made the beak very tight and I wanted it strong because it's going to be sticking out. So I want it to be fairly strong as I put on the cement. Now I did make some mistakes, I would say, that I would have done differently and I thought about it and I would have wired the tail out and maybe wired, uh, put some wire or masking tape the wings a little bit better, but I wasn't sure so I didn't do it on this one, but next time I would. Now let me just give you a hint. Some of you are going to say, well wait a minute, you can't put masking tape underneath and then coat it with cement. You can't. Technically, you could make an ice form and coat it with cement and if it dries quick enough and the ice disappeared, you would have yourself a statue. So don't worry about what you're using. You use what will work for your stuffed animal if you're using a stuffed animal. You could actually even form something in aluminum foil and coat it as well because the cement, remember, is going to get as hard as a rock. Of course, you could drop it and break it, but you could drop anything and break it. But the point is, once it's dry, it's dry. So I wrapped the body on this little stuffed parrot as well because he was fat. Hummingbirds aren't fat. This was a chunky little beanie bag and I wanted the body to be a little bit on the slim side, so I tied yarn very tightly around the body to give the body more of a slim look like a hummingbird. Rem remember, this is more like a cartoon figure, not so much like being that realistic, but who knows, I may get realistic next time. And that was it. So the body was tied in yarn and now I had it pretty much the way I wanted it. 
So I decided I was going to do the cement work on a tote lid. You all know how I got a ton of tote lids and it's a perfect thing to do your work on, your craft work on, because it's easy to just pick up and move and you don't get your table full of paint and cement and all that. Now the cement that I'm going to end up using here will be pre-mixed because that's just what I have. You can mix your own if you want to get the cement and the sand. Um, I had pre-mixed. I did put on a mask. I would say, say if you're working with cement, it's very, very fine and you can breathe it in and professionals usually do put on some sort of mask. So I did put on a mask because I don't want to breathe in that fine dust of cement in my lungs. Now I took pre-mix and I sifted out the rocks and that's the way I did it for, my, for me. Again, you can do it any way you want. And then you mix the cement in a very, well, you can't mix it too thick like clay. I wish you could, but it doesn't work that way. So you mix it kind of like a cake batter. And that's, you know, this is how I did the stuffed animal. Because what you're going to basically do is dip it. Now, if you've got a way of hanging it, you can hang it to dry whatever way you want. I decided to just keep it on the lid because this way I can move the tote lid anywhere I want while it's drying. Now, I made sure that my cement was mixed. And like I said, it looked like a cake batter. It was on the thin side, but not watery. You don't want it watery. Cement isn't supposed to be watery. And then I just dipped it in there, kind of like you're washing a pet, you know, in a bowl <laughs> or in a bathtub. You just dip it in there and try to coat the whole thing. Now, it may be good to maybe dampen your stuffed animal first. I kept working it into the wet cement. And I pushed it through and made sure that the cement really got attached very well to all the fabric, as well as any place I put string or masking tape. And then once I thought the whole thing was well dipped and completely covered in the wet cement, then I took it out from the, I was using, it's an old gallon tub there. It's like an ice cream container. I took it out and I formed it in the position I wanted it to be. I kind of put the feet out and the tail out. Now, again, I would have wired it or put even a wooden dowel and tape that on with masking tape, that would have held the tail better. I did not. I was depending on the cement to get hard enough, but working with fabric, it isn't going to get as hard as a lot of other videos I had watched that they said it would. Well, it, let me t warn you, it doesn't. It's still fabric, so think of anything that you want to be really held stiff you want to make sure you either put a wooden dowel wire or something but i did manage to get it to work it just was a little extra work so i formed it made sure it was well covered and well coated and you can't keep putting cement on wet cement it doesn't really do anything so the best thing to do i found is just let it dry now since i was still working on another project at the time i went back about 30 minutes later and the cement on the outside was was fairly dry so i went ahead and put a little bit more on the bird itself just to add a little bit of more cement to it since it was starting to get dry so i went back and i coated it again because it was it was dry to touch about 30 minutes later and this time i had noticed that the tail wasn't going to be this you know as stiff as I wanted it to stand out. So I put the bird in an upright sitting position in the way I wanted it to be because I wanted it to sit next to a pond or on the ground. It's basically garden art. So I made it in that position and then I coated it, you know, made sure it was well coated with cement and I propped it up with some wood that I had there, just some bits and pieces of wood. And this way I would have it in the right position. Now keep in mind, this is the first cement project I've done out of cement and a stuffed animal. And just be sure it is in the in the right style that you want it because once it starts to dry, you won't really be able to change it that easily. Yes, you could crack the cement and maybe reposition it a little bit, but pretty much when you get this going and you want to prop it up, put it in the fashion in which you want it to sit, whether sitting, standing, whatever you're working with, Get it in that, that position and then let it dry overnight. So let me see on this hummingbird. I actually took my time and I took about a week because I was working on multiple projects. So you can go back and you can recode it and reposition it. I will give you a hint. 
wet it. Make sure it's really wet. Just take water, sponge your hand, and wet your project down. When you wet it, the cement that comes back onto it will adhere really good. And I used a spoon to kind of coat on and I wanted to make it smooth because it was quite rough. But you can rebuild it and build it as you want. I even built a stand for it. I came back and I wet it. I tried it one time when it was dry and it didn't work. Everything fell off and I realized you've got to go back and wet it. It's good if you get your project done every day because it does take time for the cement to really cure. So the best thing to do is go back and do it the next day and try to get it done within the first couple days and it should be really perfect. But that is the best way to do it. Just remember to wet your project when it's dry if you're adding on more cement. And that is before it's completely cured. Because in a couple weeks it'll be cured. It won't be that easy to add. But you can buy cement bond that will go on to, to dried cement if it doesn't work. But I didn't have a problem with this. So on the last day I came back one more time. I mixed up more cement. And I made sure that the bird got a really good coating. And that all the fabric, there was no fabric showing anymore. I had a stand that I had made and it did adhere to my bird and I let him dry on that stand. It is now one piece. It did seal up, but I did wet the bird. So keep that in mind. Made sure that the tail was straight. I was having a problem with the tail because it was floppy. Remember, it's material underneath and I was only making it maybe a quarter of an inch thick. So if I would have wired it or even tied on some a piece of wood or a nail or something that would have held the tail in position i did not but i kept adding on cement where the tail was didn't know if i'd get it to become solid enough to pick up and move around but it did it worked and again just make sure and when you go back to work on your project that the cement is wet just wet it down and i was very happy the way it turned out it was a very easy project to do. The places I read online and different things was they made it sound quite simple that you just take your stuffed animal, dip it in some cement, sit it outside in the garden and you've got a statue. Well it, it doesn't work that way. It does need to be solid enough. You pick it up and it's fairly heavy considering it's a stuffed animal in there and it is solid. It has been out in the rain well, the little bit of rain we get, it gets hosed down all the time when we fill up the pond there. And it's in the sun. It is doing very good. Like I said, think about it as you're working on it. Get the If you're working on a stuffed animal and you want to position the arms or the legs or something a certain way, position it with either masking tape or yarn, a pipe cleaner, wire. If you want it to stand, if you're working with a Cabbage Patch doll. You could, you know, position it with wire and you do not have to insert the wire on the inside of your stuffed animal. You could actually tape it on with masking tape because once the cement dries and it is cured, it doesn't matter what it look like underneath because that cement on the outside is going to be your foundation for this, for your animal, for your project. And well, you know what? The sky's the limit and I am very happy with it. So that's all there was to it. You just have to know the little tricks on how to do it and you should be able to have tons of fun making old stuffed animals into something else that you can sit outside and use for garden decor anywhere you want and the weather won't bother it, sun, shine, or rain. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget, to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Did you know you once looked like this?